Samsung has a newish feature on their Android tablets called Second Screen. Turns your Galaxy Tab into a second monitor for Windows computers. Similar to how Sidecar works on Macs. Hello, my name is Brad, I review tech for Creative Professionals, and when I sat down to review the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra a few weeks ago, I set aside some time to check out Samsung's new second screen feature. What I quickly came to realize is that I had not set aside enough time to really test this out the way I wanted to. So that is what I'm going to be doing today, doing a little bit of a deeper dive and, and checking out some of the quirks. I ended up having a lot of questions about this, like how does this work on a lower power tablet like the S7 FE that came out last summer? What conditions does this end up performing best in? I've also been critical of Apple Sidecar in the past. It does something similar. I wanted more room to show what these do side by side and explain why I think that this was a better implementation than what Apple put together. Specifically when we're talking about artists and illustrators who may see this tablet as a replacement for something like a Wacom drawing tablet. So what is second screen? How does it work? So what you want to do is swipe down on your Samsung tablet and toggle on the second screen feature. And then on your Windows computer, you're going to hold down the Windows key and press the letter K. This brings up some options to connect your device to an external device. So you click on the device you're looking for and you're good to go. Now on the tablet side, you're going to get an option here if you want to optimize your stream for video or if you want to optimize it for drawing slash gaming. I, I love that they've added this in here. You can choose how you want to prioritize your connections. So I, of course, chose drawing and gaming. There's some features along the side here. I'm gonna check that box, that's important to me. What that's gonna do is it's allowing me to use the touch screen on the tablet and of course the pen. It also has some little quirks here, like it accesses the device's speakers. So in that regard, for some people, they're probably gonna want more granular control than Windows actually gives them here because it completely takes over the tablet. But overall, you know, I didn't think it was that big a deal. You can set this up to mirror your display, extend your display, or be the primary screen that you're using instead of your laptop screen. For the sake of testing, I ended up going with the extended screen because that's the way I like to use these. Now, in my initial review, I was really impressed by how well this worked because when I connected it and I was drawing, there was some lag. I could definitely tell there was some lag, but overall it felt good. I was drawing. It felt responsive. I I liked the experience. Of course, there is going to be more lag here than there would be in a native Android app or more lag than you would find if you were using a traditional graphics tablet. But I think the key question is, is there too much lag to still be responsive and feel like you're drawing? And there, I thought it was fine. So once I got into the flow, it was a lot like drawing on a Cintiq. And the S Pen itself is really, really good when you're talking about pressure. It gives you really smooth lines. I found that it was extremely accurate. So all of the things that you're used to getting in an S Pen we're available right here on Windows. Now I want to be careful here because even though I think it's good, I don't want to go out and say it's as good as a traditional screen-based graphics tablet. For example, colors get dulled a little bit when you're streaming that image over. Where a lot of the dark and light areas meet, you get some degradation in image quality. You could definitely see that when you're looking at the tablet screen. Even if you go into Windows and adjust the resolution and play with the settings and things like that, you can still tell that you're not getting quite as good of an image as this screen is capable of producing. Now for a lot of artists who really appreciate visual fidelity because those are the people who absolutely love it, especially like photographers, they aren't gonna like this at all. The other piece of this, of course, is, is the lag itself, which I've already mentioned and I've talked about. It really comes down to how much lag you personally can handle. Sitting down and inking an old sketch, I really wasn't having too much of a problem with it. From time to time, the connection would definitely dip and I would notice the lag getting a little bit worse. Once or twice, I would turn off the screen and reconnect it and it would be fine. Sometimes if I just waited a minute or two for it to catch up with me, it would also get better. So my general takeaway was yes, this definitely can be used in place of a Wacom screen tablet, but I would say only for limited use. If you wanna jump into Photoshop every so often and, and sketch something up, that's good. Maybe something you can toss in your bag, take to work with you. So if you need to draw on occasion, it's great for that. But if you're using your drawing tablet one or two hours a day or more, that's when I'd say it's probably not that full-time replacement you're looking for. Now, the great thing about a lot of these tablets like the S8 Ultra that I'm talking about here is how portable it is. But if you do, you should really be protecting yourself by using a VPN, like NordVPN, who happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Nord is more than just a VPN. It can protect your online privacy, like your communications and your personal data, give you better access to content, 
wherever you are. For me, it's all about security. I really like the peace of mind of having a VPN whenever I'm connected to any Wi-Fi that is not my own. I like knowing that everything is locked up and protected and nobody is poking around through my personal data. They even have something here called double data encryption, where it's routing your data through two VPN services, encrypting your data twice. Is that overkill? Yeah, maybe, but why risk it? So why Nord? Well, it's easy to use. You connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. That's what I'm doing on my tablets. I just auto connect all the time and I completely forget that it's there. It's always connected, just silently keeping my data safe in the background. They have over 5,300 super fast servers located in 60 countries all over the world. And your account can support up to six simultaneous connections. It's available on every major platform. We're talking Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, even your Android TV supports NordVPN. Plus, there's no data logging. Your privacy, it's important. It's Nord's birthday, 10 years. To celebrate, they're giving you a gift. Use my link down below in the description and you can win either a month, a free year, or two free years when you sign up. All of this with Nord's risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So what about using the second screen not for drawing? Well, for that, I thought it was great. I mentioned there were different settings here. You had the video versus the gaming slash drawing settings. I tried playing videos on the drawing settings and overall it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It wasn't chunky at all. I Thought it worked well. It wasn't as smooth as watching just on my main laptop screen, but it was passable. Drawing on the other hand, when I was in the video mode was definitely laggier and I could see why they added that separate setting just for that. Now I was curious, was it the hardware that was making this work so well? I was testing on a Dell XPS, which is probably the best Windows machine I own. Definitely the best Windows machine I have. And unfortunately I don't have any really old laptops just sitting around that I could test this out on, but I did want to test it out on something that maybe didn't have such a good graphics card, so I grabbed the Surface Pro 8. So I did some tests there, and I got the same results. Still good, worked pretty much the same exact way. So then I was curious, what about Android hardware? So I grabbed the Galaxy Tab S7 FE, which is a, a larger tablet that Samsung came up with uh, last year, mid last year, a budget version of their 7 Plus from the year before. It also got this feature in an update. So when I connected that to the Dell, the lag was here again, uh, and at first it was laggy, but then I found that it was getting better over time. And as I tested it more and more, I thought, hey, this is this is pretty good. This is good here as well. So this versus Sidecar, and what is my beef with Apple Sidecar anyway? So I said on Twitter, and I may have said in my previous video, I think this is a better implementation than Sidecar. And the people of Twitter were like, you got some splaining to do. Okay, so here's the thing. Sidecar, as a second screen, does some things really well, but when it comes to drawing an illustration, they're just not implemented well, and Apple hasn't done anything to make them better in the year since it was introduced. So what does it do well? Well, the screen quality itself is really good. In fact, I think the image quality I was getting on the iPad Pro was better than what I was getting on the Tab 8 Ultra, S8 Ultra. So the image quality is best in class there, and if that's what you're looking for, I think the iPad does that better. Where Sidecar really falls apart for me is that drawing experience I mentioned before. When drawing in Photoshop, every time I put the pencil down on the screen, it produces a little blob before the line starts drawing. So whatever's happening there, it detects no pressure sensitivity at the very beginning, and then it starts catching up. Anyway, that's that's horrible, and it's a complete non-starter if you're doing any kind of line work that has to be clean. So I could stop there and say, okay, I can't use this because of that, but, but there's more. The other thing that comes across here is that the lines are kind of wobbly. There is some mechanical jitter, a fair amount of mechanical jitter uh, when you're drawing slow angled lines on this. That's something that happens with a lot of battery powered styluses that doesn't happen a whole lot. Like you really have to look for it to try to find it when you're drawing on the iPad in a native app. But as soon as you hook the iPad up to a computer, you see it all over the place. So that's another thing that goes against it when I'm trying to create clean line art that it's working against me. If I'm in Photoshop, I can pinch and zoom. I can use two fingers to pan around. But again, this is not implemented particularly well. Pinch to zoom is fine. It works okay. But panning around that canvas with your hands, it's just a mess. That thing is, you move like a pixel or two and that canvas is flying all over the place. So yeah, that's why I'm impressed with second screen. It's not because it's perfect in every single way. It's just that I think it's implemented extremely well for artists and illustrators. And you can tell that they've thought through a lot of those things from the jump. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.